how much his presence around the basket will influence their ability to get those 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 layups. Opening tip is controlled by Toledo, and four seconds in, Treshawn Fletcher will head to the free throw line. Well, and then right away we see Pinova there coming, waiting, kind of anticipating coming from that weak side after the jump ball, looking for the block, and um, he missed it. And Fletcher gets to the free throw line with the foul. Foul is on John Elmore. Treshawn Fletcher hits the first free throw. Fletcher leading this Toledo team in scoring, rebounding, assists, and steals. Not bad uh, having set out a year, and uh, certainly he's uh, he's going to make the most of his last season at, uh, here at Toledo. And not only that, a tremendous leader as well. Dr. Walchuk has said, I love coaching him. I love the kid. I love his family. Panama, too strong at the other end. Nate Navigato rips down the rebound. Good defense by Adway there. He closed, kept his hands up, and, and didn't, didn't foul. Taylor Adway goes right at Penava, who takes the charge. Penava was in good position there, um, thinking maybe getting him out on the floor might uh, might cause him a problem. But here he moves his feet pretty good and gets himself square. And Taylor just barrels into him, and uh, good call by the official. Shoulder first, they'll call it every time. This is Jared West, a freshman from Clarksburg, West Virginia. Elmore averaging almost 25 points a game, short on the floater. Navagato, an outstanding three-point shooter, 41 and a half percent. Hadway not one to shoot from the outside. In fact, the only non-three-point shooter on the floor right now for the Rockets. Hadway could not finish. That's another block for ID and Penava. And again, he came from the help position to get there and uh, was able to get it before Adway could get it to the rim. C.J. Burks called for the carry. What will be really interesting when Toledo makes that substitution that we see so often where Luke Kanapke comes in for Adway and Luke's capable of stepping out behind the three-point line. And if Pinova is matched up on him, drawing Pinova away from the basket, I think that will hopefully clear some of those basket cuts for the Rockets. Adway's not near the threat on the perimeter that Nat Kanapke is. Fletcher was trying to post up Jared West. West poked it away, but Fletcher bailed out, and Adway bailed out as well. Not a great pass from him. Second early foul on Marshall. The idea was right, but uh, maybe a tougher angle, and, uh, and you know they're, they're very pleased with West's defense this year coming in. It's somewhat of a surprise for him from the freshman. They, they knew he could shoot, but uh, they're very pleased with his, his defensive effort. Fletcher in and out from three. Penova pulls down the rebound. Junior from Sarajevo in Bosnia. Here's Burks for three. Marshall on the board with a 3-2 lead. Well, we knew it was just a matter of time, and Burks is able to come off that uh, handoff high screen from Pinovan and got enough space to, to knock it down. Burks is Marshall's second leading score, 19.2 per contest. Nolan Sanford coming off of that impressive offensive night at Detroit Mercy. Here's an NBA three from Sanford. Rimmed out and Elmore pulled it down. Elmore just two assists. Last time out against Chattanooga, his lowest assist output for the season. Sanford swatting it into the backboard. Here comes Marion Jackson in this rocket offense. Sanford missed high off the window. Adway couldn't quite tip it in. Pinnabas now brought the ball up a couple times, showing his ability to handle the ball. Good defense by Adway that time. Taylor got back into the lane, turned around, and was able to be ready for Pinnabas pushing it up the floor. Taylor Adway, I think, has shown in these first couple of minutes he is not afraid of one of the country's truly elite shot blockers. There is Pinnabas too strong again. So both teams getting up shots, but not many of them going down. In fact, these two teams have combined one of ten from the floor. Adway with a throwdown, and Penova fouled him. Well, that's the way you take it to the shot blocker. You take it strong, and Taylor set that ball screen and slipped right down the lane. Sanford found him, and boy, when you see Taylor Adway taking the ball strong to the basket like that, 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 that looked real good. You see him going up real strong here. He wasn't going to give Penova a chance to block that at all. Not to toot my own horn here, but I believe I said just a minute ago that Taylor Radway wasn't afraid of Idine Penova. That's why you're sitting where you are, Mason. <laughs> Edway couldn't convert the old-fashioned three-point play. 
Marshall, a team that scores 89 points a game, though they give up 82 points per contest. Here's Jaron West letting it fly. Johnny Colyannon with the offensive board. Elmore, a step back three. Got it. That was a big step back. He took a, it wasn't just a little shuffle step back. He took him about a yard step to get back there and create that space from Navigato and elevated right up over Toledo's defense. Marion Jackson. He'll go with Penema. Hadway tried to follow. Out to Fletcher, open for three. You gotta love the way Adway's going to the basket, both on that dunk and then going hard on that missed shot. Toledo needs to create some more second chance points for themselves. As you see Elmore there just turning the corner around. Toledo's defense wasn't in good position that time. Don't think Taylor Adway wanted to get called for his second foul there. Sanford on the handoff, kept the dribble alive, trying to swing it into Adway. And the foul is on Marshall. Might be on uh, Penava, it might be his second. It is on I need Penava. That's two on the big fella. Very deep period, only nine available scholarship players. That could be a big loss for the duration of this first half. Most definitely, and, and you know, his presence uh, defending the rim, as well as his ability, to, as he's shown so far, getting about the floor. Uh, they're going to have to adjust you know, early in this game. Nice take by Treshawn Fletcher. Missed the layup, but Luke Kanapke in off the bench. On hand to stick it back in. Kanapke in the game. So is Justin Roberts, the backup point guard for Toledo. Second offensive rebound for the Rackets, and Luke kept the ball high that time and went right back up with it strong. Didn't, didn't bring it down to where those little guys and slap it away from him. Darius George, number 21, out there in place of Penava from Marshall. And that's an offensive foul. Oh, Again, Johnny Kolyanin away from the ball. That was an easy call for the official on that side. He wasn't anywhere near set on that uh, that screen. Justin Roberts got the start against Kansas a couple of weeks ago as Jalen Sanford called for trying to force his way through Jared West. <laughs> Uh, that's a second second foul on the Rockets uh, on the offensive end. Yeah, back on November 28th, Toledo played at Kansas. Justin Roberts, a native of Lawrence, Kansas, got the start. Got a nice ovation from the fans when he was announced. Uh, Kowalczyk said he made the decision to start him back in the summer. It's one of the easiest decisions he made in the offseason as Elmore missed the three. Roberts, the kind of player that won't hurt you when he's out there. Good defender. Doesn't turn the ball over. And right there, teed up Nate Navigato for the driving layup. Well, he teed him up, and Navigato curled off that screen. Again, without Pinova in there, it makes it uh, makes it a little bit easier to come down that lane. You don't have to worry about him coming out of it somewhere for a block shot. Jared West on uh, the take and got the bounce off the front of the rim. Jared West having a fine freshman season, just under 12 points a game. Does a lot of his damage from beyond the arc, shooting almost 50% from three. Kanapke battling with Kolyanin on the low block. Ten to shoot. Fletcher from the free throw line. Rayshon Fletcher already with seven points. Well, good patience by the Rockets there, and good space in offensive. They had a lot of room to work. That's Burks. Fouled as he let it go. C.J. Burks will shoot two. You don't like to see it when you, when they when uh, they foul the jump shooter here. Uh, you know, Fletcher going up, doing a good job to defend. It looks like he may have just got him across the, the wrist there. Not blatant, but enough to catch the official's attention. So C.J. Burks at the line, a junior from Martinsburg, West Virginia. Here's a guy who played in a really deliberate high school system at Hedgesville High School, where he would get up maybe 10 shots a game on a particularly prolific night, going from that to playing in hillbilly ball. <laughs> Not the easiest transition, but he's made it awfully well. 19 points a game 
becoming a star in the backcourt for Dan D'Antoni. I feel like it's easier to transition from the more deliberate patient offense to this um, simply because, you know, it seems like Coach D'Antoni just gives them the ability to go play basketball. As we see him extending the pressure this time, kind of a token full court pressure, but still pressure, no doubt. This is Dwayne Rose Jr. with the ball, who has not seen a lot of time early on this season. Nephew of Derek Rose. Navagato, the floater. A new dimension that we see more and more to Navagato's game is the ability to head fake because of everybody knowing him as a shooter and then able to get in those drives and uh, good play. There's good defense lob. by Kanapke. I apologize, Mason, but boy, Kanapke's more and more in good position defensively. Rose couldn't bank in the pull-up, but bashed out to the perimeter by Navagato. Here's Roberts back at the rim. Another offensive board for Navagato. Didn't get the bounce. Marshall comes away with it. Three on one, here is Burks. Went around Roberts, laid it in. Uh, Marshall quickly goes from defense to offense there, and beats the, the Rocket defenders down. Fletcher and, and Roberts were the only ones back, and uh, Twitty was crashing the boards real hard that last possession. Dwayne Rose, foul as he swung it inside to Kanapke. It's on Christian Thieneman, a sophomore from Louisville. His first personal foul. You can see there the explosiveness of Rose with the basketball. He, he got the ball out there about 22 feet from the basket and, uh, you know, one dribble and he's there. Luke Kennedy. Uh, again, we talked about his ability with Pinova being in the game to step out. And he was mid-range that time and uh, you know, Luke's very comfortable facing up and shooting the basketball. No more. Good quick hands from Roberts. Better hands from Kanapke to corral it. Navagato was fouled. Marshall on Darius George. Toledo already in the bonus. Not even eight minutes into this game. That was the seventh Marshall foul. Nice court vision there by Justin Roberts, the, that stereotypical, prototypical point guard where he, he got the ball down in the lane, found, uh, found the trailer on the wing, Navagato, and, and gave it to him in perfect stride. And Navagato has now missed his last two free throws, dating back to the end of the Detroit Mercy game. That was what led to the Treshawn Fletcher foul that gave Detroit Mercy a chance to tie the game with the two free throws. He had said, hey, I wasn't even thinking that Nate might miss the second free throw. He's one of the best in the country. I'm thinking, of course he made it. We're up by three. Didn't realize he had missed. Committed the foul and then redeemed himself with the buzzer beating three. Good. Go from scapegoat to hero in the matter of a blink of an eye there, but uh, that's what the game is all about. Good defense by Dwayne Rose. Phil Blenso skying in for the offensive rebound and off the bench for the thundering herd, a sophomore from Wheeling, West Virginia. Lots of West Virginians on this Marshall team. But here in Toledo, Ohio, they trail the Rockets by four. Currently with the Houston Rockets. Was an NBA assistant under him at three different schools prior to that 30 years as a high school head coach. And of course, the creator of Hillbilly Ball. Well, he certainly has the, has been well traveled and certainly successful on a whole bunch of different levels. Nice pick and roll there uh, and feed from, I believe that was what, uh, Burks made the, the high lob there. Jansen Williams, the Richard freshman, was on the end of it. And an offensive foul on Toledo. Dylan Alderson, the freshman off the bench. John Kowalczyk in his eighth season here at Toledo with a more traditional suit and tie. I think all you need to know about Dan D'Antoni summed up in his feelings on traditional coach dress. He says, heck, I'm from the country, and I don't know who came up with that tie thing anyway. <laughs> So well, there you go. And, and it works for him. So um, certainly it, uh, he's kind of got, uh, got his comfort level with it, no doubt. Elmore on the offensive and fouled by Kanapke at the rim. Hey, 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 hey. 
Big Luke having a terrific sophomore season, just under 12 points a game, just over six boards a game. Elmore so good at initiating contact. Well, he initiated contact and he used his body to, to, to shield the ball away from Kanapke and uh, able to get it up to the rim. Well, Marshall has struggled defensively for much of the season, but in their last two games they've been much, much better. They blew out Akron, held them to 64 points, beat Chattanooga 70 to 66 four days ago. It was John Elmore, of all people, not Ideen Peneva, who came up with a crucial block in the final seconds to help seal that win. Elmore joked after the game that last he checked his vertical was about 40 inches. Could really get up there. Nice spin by Kanapke to get away from Phil Bledsoe. Not only a nice spin, but very patient that time, and he, he sized up the defense, wasn't in a rush, and made a nice nice move to the basket with his, with his weak hand. Rocket lead is three. Screen from Williams. West into the paint. George didn't get a friendly roll. Alderson knocked it out to the sideline. It was saved by West, but right to Alderson, and here's Marion Jackson ahead of the back. Outstanding transition by the Rockets that time. We've seen it from Marshall a couple times. The Rockets turn the table, and Jackson gets the layup on the outlet from Alderson. Jackson, the freshman from Garfield Heights. Here's Elmore catch and shoot. Jalen Sanford with the long rebound. Now the Gatto running up ahead. Well, anytime they get a lot of three-point shots and they get missed, those are long rebounds, and the Rockets are, are showing a little bit of trend. Cool. Coleman collected Todd Kowalczyk. Dan D'Antoni was barking out instructions to his team to the point the official had to kind of hold him in the coach's box. West tried to pass it to the perimeter, and that's a second nice defensive play from Dylan Alderson. Alderson, a freshman from Clarkston, Michigan, won a state championship last year to the legendary Dan Fife, and two inside for Taylor Radway. Once again, Toledo's big, gets the ball on that after that screen and takes their time in the block. That uh, real smart play by Taylor. George comes up empty. An offensive rebound, but no good on the putback from Jansen Williams, Toledo, on an 8-0 run. They've made their last five shots. That'll end that streak as Marion Jackson comes up empty. A very good three-point shooter. Just better than 50% from long range. Knocked on four of them up in Detroit on Wednesday. Uh, he's getting more and more comfortable with everything here at the collegiate level. Drive and dip to Bledsoe. Alderson pulls it down. Rockets are very quick right now to those defensive rebounds, and it's, it's limiting Marshall to one shot. Fletcher, wide of the mark. Jake Gass next to me shook his head as soon as he let that ball go. <laughs> not a bad shot, just I'm not sure he was ready to shoot it that time. He was, he was looking at his feet. And, um, a good shot for Fletcher. He's more capable of making that, just... Uh, not sure he was ready to shoot that one. That was a great one from Jared West. Had a career best 23 points, five of six from three, and a loss at Illinois earlier this season. His dad, also named Jared, famous in West Virginia, banked in a three in the second round of the 1998 NCAA tournament in Boise to beat Cincinnati and send the Mountaineers into the Sweet 16. But Marion Jackson has the answer. That ball moved around after Sanford's drive on the weak side baseline. It moved to the corner, to the wing, across to Jackson for that shot. Elmore fouled by Taylor Adway on the way up. That's two on Adway. And the prolific John Elmore will shoot free throws after the timeout. Toledo having a terrific first. Toledo's runs were on those uh, the breakaways off of either the long rebounds or the steals and a couple drives to the basket uh, in addition to Marion's three there, but uh, Toledo's getting very good looks at the baskets uh, this last four or five minute run. John Elmore out of Charleston, West Virginia has developed a pretty cool tradition, I think. He wears a different NBA throwback jersey to Marshall's home arena before home games, every home game. He's got a pretty impressive collection. Pete Maravich, Larry Bird, Reggie Miller, Jerry West. Got a John Stockton one he can pull out at some point as well. And Kanapke is called for the foul. So that's two on Kanapke, two on Taylor Adway as well. And they're going to come back with Adway here. 
I didn't see, uh, I saw the, the tail end of it, but it looked like Kanapke had his arms high, holding position. Um, must have been something happened be beforehand. We talked about Marshall not having front court depth. Toledo really doesn't. Atway and Kanapke, the only two players that can really play at the five. Nate Navagato could in a pinch if you really need him to. And that would certainly be a, a unique set for matchup for Toledo offensively as well. I think Peneva back out there with two fouls, almost missed everything from three. Ariane Jackson, freshman from Garfield Heights. Pass was too quick for Taylor Adway. Here comes Darius George. The Euro step to lay it in. Darius George. Darius George, a player that Dan D'Antoni expected to redshirt coming into the season. He was a Class 2A Player of the Year in Virginia, in Staunton, Virginia. Jackson on the attack and denied by Peneva. Well, that's what Peneva does best. He just waited right there and waited for Jackson to get to him. George, a three. Darius George. Darius George with five off the bench. And that's how quickly Marshall has the ability to get back in a couple missed shots, a black shot, and uh, they convert. And it's back to a three-point game. Inside to Adway, over Peneva. Well, you saw him take it into Peneva's chest and initiate that contact. That's the best way to go at those shot blockers, take the ball into them and, and uh, make them uncomfortable. Well, Yen enough to set the screen for Jared West. West into the paint. Jared West has got quite an offensive game. We've seen him from outside and inside. There are a couple drives now around uh, Toledo's defense. You mentioned it earlier, this Marshall, Marshall coaching staff really happy with the defense he has played this year. That's a foul on George. That's two on him now. Eight team fouls called on each team in this first half. Justin Roberts back in for Toledo. Ariane Jackson will get a breather. And then Tony joked that he was tired of people saying Anton leaving the D out as if his teams didn't play any defense. So he signed Jared West to put the D back in his name. <laughs> well, he, uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, they've been very pleased, you know, with his, his uh, ability to get after the, the ball handler particularly, uh, especially as a freshman coming in. And, and uh, he certainly is contributing at the offensive ends so far. So he's made his presence felt uh, quite a bit here early in this game. I think we have a sideline warning against the Marshall bench. Rashawn Fletcher with the free throw. He's got nine for the game. No announcement, but that's certainly what it looked like. And on confirmation from the scores table that he has been warned. Well, I think they got Adway now with his, with his third foul. Taylor was just a little slow getting in position there. And got caught with, uh, with the reach. He was about a half step too slow being where he needed to be. So James Gordon the fourth checks in. Only 6'5". He has bumped up from 215 last year to 240 this year. They need him to be a post player, and he will need to play big minutes at the end of this half, you would think. You don't want to lose Kanapke to a third foul. Peneva hits the first free throw. Well, and that's another reason for some of these early season games. As much as you're looking to win, you're also judging, uh, you know, judging these guys not only on their practice time, but now what they can do on the floor. And this is a chance for, uh, for Gordon to show Coach what, he, what he's uh, capable of when the lights are on. Gordon got his first minute of action this season at Detroit Mercy at the very end of the first half. Got his first two points as well. Easy layup right before halftime. Fletcher through contact off the small square. 11 points for the senior. Fletcher didn't mind seeing Pinova in there at all, did he? Indeed he did not. Pinova doesn't want to pick up a third either. C.J. Burks 
mid-range game is working for him. Tough shot. Pretty good defense by Fletcher there. Um, hands up. Maybe could have been a little closer on him, but, but certainly not bad. But uh, Burks had a nice shot on Fletcher. Seemed like Burks wanted to get that one up the whole time he had the ball. Coach D'Antoni told C.J. Burks this summer, hey, you cannot afford to play to fit in this year. You have to play to be a star. And so far, that's what he's done. Eight points tonight, averaging almost 20 a game this season. Jalen Sanford, Toledo's second leading scorer at 16 a game, has not scored tonight. Here's Fletcher. And fouled by Burks as he let it go. I think he's going to be shooting three. Special foul with number 14, C.J. Burks. His first personal foul. Team's done. You know, and that, the uh, issue you're going to see now uh, with Penova matched up on Gordon. Penova basically camped out and played a one-man zone that last possession. Um, they're not, uh, until Gordon proves to them he's going to be an offensive threat, Penova's just going to sit in there and basically double-team anybody that comes into the, into the lane. Be ready to block shots. Fletcher, the transfer from Colorado. Born in Wilmar, Arkansas. Moved to Washington State when he was in junior high school. And what a boost he has given this Toledo program. This year on the floor, last year in practice during his redshirt season. Burks letting it fly. Penova, the offensive rebound, and he was fouled on the way down. I think they may have gotten Navigato with the push before uh, uh, Penova was working for the offensive rebound. Exactly. Toledo had done such a good job throughout most of this first half on the defensive glass. Now with their bigs in foul trouble, um, you need you need five guys blocking out and, and being real aggressive and really hustling after that those loose balls and being in good position to to try to keep Marshall being one and done at the offensive end. Penova from Bosnia, but he got to Marshall. He was about 180 pounds, thinner than thin. <laughs> Spent a lot of time in the weight room. He's bulked up to a fairly robust 220. He's kind of wiry anyway. Excellent timing as a shot blocker. In fact, was credited with six blocks in their win over Chattanooga earlier this week. Coach D'Antoni went into the postgame presser and said, yeah, he might have had six in the first three minutes. Got to take a look at that again. Fletcher long on the three. Navigato tapped it back out, but too far back out. Not a backcourt violation, though. They can set it up again. Jalen Sanford goes right at Penova, who blocked it. Gordon kept it alive. Penova again. Well, that's what he did as advertised. West. Smacked out of bounds by Johnny Corriana. Good defensive position that time by the Rockets, not only in their defensive set, but on the blackout, and it allowed, uh, allowed the, the... And Mrs. Claus making an appearance. You know, the, the weather outside today certainly was uh, Christmas-like with, uh, with the, the snow and all that, so I guess we are getting into that season. Dare I say the weather outside is frightful. I was going to go there, but I stopped short of that. I figured I'd set it up for you, <laughs> Mason. So. You set him up, I'll knock him down. <laughs> Another whistle away from the ball in what has been a foul-heavy first half. Two fouls now on Jared West. Jared West. Jared West setting his case to Coach D'Antoni. Ty doesn't have to convince the coach much, but uh, the other three gentlemen on the floor might. Uh, he's going to try to plead his case now to the official. So. Treshawn Fletcher has done most of his damage from the foul line tonight. 15 points, 8 of 8 from the free throw line. 68% from the stripe on the year. In fact, he has now hit all nine. He's attempted the rest of the team combined 0 of 3. Jared West and Hydeen Penova out there with two fouls. Here's Elmore, pushed it to the corner. That's Bull Yannon for three. Just four of 16 from beyond the arc all season. It's a big one there to make it a three-point game. 
Elmore drove and, and drew the defender on the help and recover. And Gordon wasn't able to get out quick enough. And nice find by Elmore to the, the jump shooter. Coach D'Antoni certainly has the Baltic region covered. Bolyanin from Croatia. Peneva from Bosnia. Milan Miovic, who would give them a big boost at 6'9", senior from Serbia, out with a broken wrist at the moment. Here's Gordon, knocking down the short jumper. He created space, he moved without the basketball, got away from Sanford on a drive, and um, knocked it down like uh, he's been playing a lot of minutes. Good, good to see Gordon knock that in. Well, oh, the lob to Peneva! Uh, that's, that's the size lacking in the Toledo defense and the pressure on the drive. He was able, there wasn't a whole lot of pressure on that, the dribbler that time. He was able to kind of size up that lob. Peneva from the field this year shooting 66%, and I guess that's why. Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Sanford created separation. He still has not scored, and that's off the fingertips of Peneva. Just rolled away from Navagato, who was stranded. And an easy deuce for Peneva. He's got six points. You like the play of Gordon on the offensive glass that time. He really kind of pressured by his, his being aggressive to the ball. ball it forced Peneva to lose the ball out of bounds. Fletcher kept it alive for Toledo. You know, Coach D'Antoni might have a bone to pick with the statisticians after this game as well because Peneva has only been credited with two blocks. He got him for four. In and out for Navagato. Gordon skying in, but off of him out of bounds. Open look for Nate. He wasn't quite able to square up and get his, get his whole body in line to the basket that time coming off that, uh, kind of that short curl from the corner. John Elmore goes right at Marion Jackson. He missed it. Navagato pulled it down. Elmore took it away. Count the basket for Penema. Well, once again, that's that uh, size advantage that Penema gives you right now against the Rockets. He kind of muscled him out, and, and Elmore snuck in there and found the big guy. It's the second foul on Jalen Sanford. Never tried to sneak in there. Pinnacle dropped the ball a little bit. He brought it down to the, to the level of the, the guards, and um, Sanford tried to get it out there and wasn't able to get a clean slap. Tied at 41 after the Penova three point play. Here's another look at it. Avogado brought it down. Elmore just poked it away. Penova there, and Sanford got called for the reach. Seven players in total who have at least two fouls. Navagato missing the three. And Marshall with a chance to take the lead before halftime. John Elmore, seven points, four rebounds, couple of assists on the baseline. Goes by Navagato. Reverse layup didn't go, but a foul is called. And Elmore, an 86% foul shooter, heads to the strike. And late whistle there. Tough matchup for Navigato on Elmore there, one on one. Kind of cleared that Marshall cleared everybody out. And tall order asking Navigato to keep up with him. Elmore, such a reliable foul shooter. We mentioned it 86%, two of five from the line tonight. Now three of six. Sanford to the sideline to call timeout. Sanford, Kanapke, and Navigato all out there with two fouls. Nadine Penava already on the bench for Marshall and indeed has his shooting shirt back on. He's not coming back in. Fletcher fouled by Phil Bledsoe. Fletcher back to the line. Well, Fletcher's taking it time and time again, real strong to the basket, other than that three that he got fouled on. Um, and that's why he's getting to the line. He's going strong, he's being strong with the ball, and he's, he's a, got a pretty powerful upper body there that, that's able to, to, uh, to maintain, maintain control. 
Fletcher's career high, by the way, 27. That was against Division Three Ohio Northern back in November. Dylan Alderson back in. Eighteen now for Fletcher. Marshall can play for the final shot of the half if they so choose. It would appear it's going to be an Elmore's hand going down the stretch to make a play. Not a surprise, especially with Peneva on the bench. Here is Elmore right around Alderson. <laughs> missed the layup. Bledsoe yeah! the got the roll. Bledsoe. Bill Bledsoe with his first points of the evening. And the thundering herd will take a one-point lead into the locker room. Toledo led by as many as nine. Marshall. I'd like to think we're going to see uh, Toledo shoot the ball much better. I think we're, we're better shooters than what, what they showed in the first half. And, and Marshall uh, sort of going to try to cut down on the fouls and keep, uh, keep the, their big guys in the game. Ideen Peneva playing it in around Luke Kanapke. Nineteen Peneva now with 11 points. Well, that's recognizing the matchup as well. And you'll see Peneva guarding Kanapke this time. There you go. You finally get Sanford. Nice back cut away from the play. Kind of get him going here because the Rackets are going to need him down in this second half. Nice feed to find him from Fletcher. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go to Peneva again, trying to get that third foul on Kanapke. Jared West lets it fly, left it short. Long rebound, though, out to Johnny Kolyanin, a junior from Croatia. We mentioned that, that benefited the Rackets a couple times in the first half, and um, that time the long rebound came out closest to the uh, Marshall player. John Elmore spins, nearly stripped, but a whistle against Marion Jackson. Todd Kowalczyk not pleased. Well, that looked pretty good defense there by young Marion. I, uh, we'll get a, a good look at the replay here, and um, Elmore brings the ball low, and wow, a lot of leather there, I think. John Elmore, three of six from the line here in the first half, knocks down the first. He entered the NBA draft back in March without hiring an agent, went through the process in May, chose to return to Marshall for another year. Around that time, he was also granted another year of eligibility. He and his brother, Ott, whom we saw briefly in the first half, originally committed to VMI. They left VMI before the basketball season started because their grandfather was ill. Grandfather Ottmer, for whom Ott is named, left school. John transferred to Marshall. VMI wouldn't let him out of his original letter of intent. They eventually relented this past spring, so he has junior standing now at Marshall. And a foul is called on the Thundering Herd. That's Spolianin. He was battling with Kanapke there off the long rebound. Kanapke's able on, I believe it was Navigato's miss, to kick it back out on the tip, uh, which is double. The Rockets over the years have gotten to be very good at that. And I uh, gave him a, an extended possession. Sanford the lob, but Kanapke was caught flat-footed. Uh, I think Kanapke obviously was expecting that. Peneva goes right around him to lay it in. I'm really surprised at Peneva's ability to handle the basketball. Several times we've seen him, you know, get the defensive rebound or get it and bring it the length of the floor. That time he takes it all the way to the basket. I'm kind of impressed by his ability to handle the ball. Really is that European-style big man. Of course, he is a European big man. I guess that's why he would be that way. Indeed. <laughs> Marianne Jackson baseline up to Navigato. Sanford will attack. The floater over Peneva. Didn't get the bounce. Marshall with a good, lively start to this second half. Well, Peneva certainly influenced that drive with Sanford. He had to, to arc it just a little bit higher than he wanted to, and that really caused the miss. But credit Peneva coming over on the help. Burks bumped by Sanford before the shot. That's three on Jalen Sanford. Really, this Marshall team makes you foul them the way they play. They're, they they do have that herky-jerky driving ability of, of getting involved in the basket. Uh, um, some of the, you know, a little more on the, the side of letting them play a little bit more with a little bit more sure. physicalness, but certainly that's the way the game's being called. You have to adjust defensively. They are aggressive and they're very quick. Burks 
left it short. Great defense by Fletcher, but Penava following up. Well, Penava quicker to the ball there. Kanapke had him blocked out and kind of rode him along, but uh, Big Luke didn't attack the basketball that time when it was there to be had. Nadine Penava with six points in the first three minutes of this second half. Cole Yannon is called for his third foul. First foul is third foul for one. Johnny Cole Yannon is third personal team second. Taylor Radway had gotten up off the bench. Don Kowalczyk pulled him back to it. Well, they're approaching that timeout, too, and, and you see Big Luke there on the slide up the out of bounds. So probably a good decision by Coach Kowalczyk. He knows his team, so um, certainly a, a good play, out of bounds play coming out. Why well, they kept him out there. Elmore hits with the offhand. John Elmore now with 11 points. We've seen him try to push the drive here two or three times now. Early in this second half, become a little more assertive offensively. Yeah, 35 points and 10 rebounds against Toledo last year. Trayshawn Fletcher from mid-range. Julian and pulled down the board. What have you thought of John Elmore tonight? Um, good player. Um, you know, I, I don't. I'm not sure we've seen his best. If his if his best is what he comes in as advertised. Um, but yeah, I think he's. I think he's a good player. Fresh on Fletcher, two on him as the fouls continue to pile up. Fighting through Dean Penava. Yeah, going right through the screen. And no sense going around that one, was there? Oh, West very quick to the basket. Scooped up by Nate Navagato. Dwayne Rose Jr. in the game. He's only averaging four and a half minutes of contest. There are a handful of games in which he has not seen the floor at all. Fletcher banks it in. Count the basket. Real good head and shoulder fake by Fletcher there. Behind the line, you see him kind of give a little head fake and then follow through with it. Way too many fouls. Yeah, both these teams are kind of high octane, go, go, go. And um, I, I think both teams are trying to hard, have a hard time settling into the rhythm uh, because of the volume of fouls. Fletcher finally misses a free throw, then misses a three. Followed it up, and Kanepke throws it down. Well, finally Toledo getting back. We saw them early in the first half where they got several offensive rebounds and, and scored some baskets off that. Uh, again, nice effort from the Rockets on the on the offensive end, and uh, Kanepke taking it strong. Here's C.J. Burks, offensive foul. Marshall Powell's number 14. <laughs> I don't think anybody was too sure. Well, I think we start. We saw his initial signal, and then he kind of went through all the other the permutations. Burks, Burks leads with that inside arm and kind of creates the space uh, with the push. See that that right elbow there, kind of um, again, maybe could have been called, maybe didn't have to be called. Napke had it poked away momentarily. Rose ran it down. Now Rose does lose it. Jared West. Hey! Blocked by Rose. Great recovery by the freshman. Definitely. Navigato. Too much. Fletcher an authoritative offensive board. Rose driving from the corner and fouled by Penava, who I think took a shot to the face. I believe he did. And uh, nice play by two nice plays really there by Rose. He comes back in um, on this particular one. He, he makes that shot fake and takes the ball strong. He didn't he didn't mind that Pinnova is one of the top shot blockers in the country. He just takes the ball right to the basket and um, now they're gonna they're gonna review it to see about the, the the blow to the face. It looked pretty incidental from uh, on the replay that we saw. Wayne Rose saying to. I mean, kind of a, hey, you might be one of the top shot blockers in the country, but my uncle is Derrick Rose. Well, it, uh, yeah, I just, I, I, I like the fact that Rose as a freshman um, comes back after making a mistake at half court. And you can see him going here strong. He's, he's going to go right up to him and 
Um, again, I, that to me is just uh, through playing basketball and, and uh, again, just another delay in the, the rhythm of this game with them having to go over to watch something that, that to me is really inconsequential. I've been hit a lot harder than that and, and uh, <laughs> didn't ask for anybody to help me, so. So nothing there, the officials have decided. I could have told them that three minutes ago. They had a little carrier pigeon up here. <laughs> And Antonio's received his explanation. Dwayne Rose, 6'3", freshman from Preet, Illinois. Now 5'5", five five from the line this year. At seven points in just a few minutes on the road at Kansas. It's the only game that Toledo really has not been in this season. Their other two losses played a very good Syracuse team, very tough. Two nights later, went to Cornell. They trailed by 20 in the second half. Cut it to one in the end, lost by four. Rose hits the two free throws. These minutes that Rose has given the Rockets and some quality minutes is also giving Jalen Sanford some rest on the bench uh, to make him be more available to, for that push down the stretch of this game. Off the hand to Darius George. Picked up by Fletcher. Jackson, Fletcher again. Great two-man basketball there by the Rockets. Um, that's uh, phenomenal. Just the way you would draw it up, two-man fast break right there. Toledo on an 8-0 run. Pinnabon missing off the heel, but the long rebound out to C.J. Burks. Burks goes by Fletcher. High off the glass, it popped out. And a foul on Fletcher as he undercut Pinnabon. Wow. Good help by Kanapke there. And they get uh, Fletcher kind of clearing him out on the block out. Hip to hip. Fletcher and Peneva. Sanford back in. He replaces Fletcher. That means Dwayne Rose stays in the game. There he is soaring for the rebound. Rose, one end to the other, lays it in. Not afraid of Kennebunk again. Not afraid, and the quickness that he got from getting that rebound and pushing it down the floor uh, is a whole nother dimension to the Rockets. That, uh, he just he got there in the blink of an eye. Dwayne Rose making a case for more playing time. Just Jared West into the paint, slipped it to Penneval, went right into Luke Kanapkin, but he traveled. Uh, like everyone was collectively holding their breath. They didn't want to see Luke get the... Uh, his third foul there, and he did a good job of just showing himself and, and really causing that turnover enough for Pinova to, 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 to hesitate and, and travel. Pinova, who grew up a lover of soccer, his parents wanted to keep him out of the harsh winter months, keep him indoors, picked up basketball, really took to it. What a player he has become. Jackson trying to swing it to Kanapke. Off the hold, it will stay with Toledo. Well, Jackson didn't have any choice. Penova came to, to block out, block him off, and a good feed to Luke. The, the feed pass was a little strong for being in close range, and Luke wasn't able to handle it, but the Rockets get a second chance here. Nate Navigato. The missing link between a pass and a shot. Wasn't sure what he wanted to do. Penova one end to the other, count the basket. Three on Navagato. Penova really shows an ability to, to get the ball up the floor. That, that's a next level type of play. Um, no kidding. You know, it, it, being that with that size and being able to handle the ball out on the court, um, in my opinion. Um, but, uh, he's going to get hit a lot harder than that in the NBA and not get a foul, though. So he might want to pre prepare himself for that. Sean Fletcher back in. Kind of a, off the miss free throw. 17 points, six rebounds, handful of blocks as well. Well, he sat a long time in that first half, too. Jackson out to Kanapke, open for three. 
Penova is very worried about help side defense, and Kanapke's going to get that chance. He can he can float out there and stand behind the line and shoot that. Penova could not answer. George up high for the offensive board. Fletcher played it straight up, didn't want to get called for a fourth foul. Well, and again, George went up real strong and, and knew to take it right back up, and um, good play by the freshman. More important at this point for Toledo to have Fletcher on the floor than uh, defending that. Fletcher from the elbow, clanged it. John Elmore has been quiet second half so far, held to just 11 points. There he goes, Peneva. Jackson trying to swipe it away. Well, he was real close to getting that off of Peneva's hip. Peneva left him open, and he left it short. Jackson thought about pushing it, but with the long arm of the law, and I think Peneva back there thought better of it. Jackson travels. Back to Waldrick, not pleased with his freshman point guard. Breaking the action. 11.44 left. This is a tight one and a good one. Rashawn Fletcher, a game high. 20. A while back, former members of the Southern Conference as well. Marshall ball trailing by three. Burks levitated in the lane, and a foul is called on Marshall. They'll get Peneva for his fourth. And he's really been kind of the, the player that's caused Toledo the, the most trouble. George has made a couple plays here and there. Um, ball's been in Elmore's hand a lot, but I think you know Peneva has really been the difference maker for the for the herd thus far. It'll be interesting to see how that affects Toledo's ability to, to drive the ball to the basket and the looks they get off of those cuts. Bill Bledsoe and Ott Elmore in for the thundering herd. How about that shift that Dwayne Rose gave Toledo? Six minutes, four points. Marianne Jackson out to a wide open Trayshawn Fletcher. Closing in on a career high. He's got 25 points. Well, again, anytime I think, in my opinion, as a shooter, the ball goes from inside out to that three-point shooter. Those are notoriously good looks for that shooter, and, and Fletcher took advantage of there on the kick out from Jackson. Fletcher imploring the crowd to make some noise. Burks. Lost the ball, picked up by Bledsoe, who had that offensive rebound and bucket right at the end of the first half, and a thunderous follow from Darius George. Wow, that's, like I said, he certainly made some contributions to this point, and that was one of them. Boy, that he went up and got that like there's no tomorrow. That shut up this Toledo crowd in a hurry. And we're finally starting to get some momentum and some, some crowd noise. And Ken Apke, nice move on Bledsoe, got the and one. Well, we saw that also early in the first half when Big Luke had it in that mid-block area, and he was real patient and worked it and worked it. This, again, spun to the same time, same thing. He spun baseline side and was able to take it up over the smaller Bledsoe and, and not only draw the foul, and, but get the basket as well. So good patience by Luke there in the low post. Kanapke converts the old-fashioned three-point play. He's got 16 points, eight rebounds, and we have not seen Taylor Adway, the starter, at all in this second half. John Elmore finishing through contact. Well, Marshall had better spacing that time, allowing Elmore to get a better drive. They've had some compact offensive sets to where there hasn't been a lot of room for Elmore really to get to the basket. Kanapke asking for it again. He's got a five-inch height advantage on Bledsoe. He traveled. That's a couple travels by the Rockets in their offensive. Luke had the right idea once he got doubled. Elmore basically left Jackson go on the cut, and uh, it was going to open the ball up for a rotation around to Jackson on the weak side ultimately, but uh, he traveled before he kicked the ball out. Elmore tiptoeing along the baseline. Spun past Navagato. Nice move by John Elmore. Well, he certainly, again, kind of faked out that he was going to go all the way through. And, and Ott Elmore riding Marion Jackson up the floor. That'll put the freshman on the free throw line. The eighth Marshall team foul. 
Marion Jackson has not scored much tonight. Just five points, but six assists, just two turnovers. I think he's played a very good floor game. I think he's had um, shown some energy out there on, on, the, on the floor. And again, I kind of like what he and, and Rose gave them, two freshman guards on the floor um, for extended minutes here in the, in the second half. Back-to-back 14-point -back games. Marion Jackson against Texas Southern and Detroit Mercy. Shooting better than 50% from beyond the arc. Jackson hits the free throws. He's got seven, and the Rocket lead is five. Burks with Kanapke on his heels. Fletcher had it for a moment, and he was fouled. Going to get Bledsoe, I think. Indeed, that's his third. Because of Fletcher's positioning in the defense, he was in good position in lane, and he was able to black out. That really allowed him to draw that foul um, over the back just because of his, his positioning. Johnny Bolyanin back in. Sean Fletcher. He's kind of made his home at the free throw line here tonight. We're going to have to rename the free throw line after him. <laughs> the Fletcher line. Better that than the Mendoza line. I knew where you were going. I, I was just, uh, yes, we've done this too, too many years now, Mason. I, I, I saw that one coming. Fletcher, 26 points, seven boards. That ties his career high now with 27. Elmore swivels around Kanapke and got the roll. Nice move by Elmore there. He, uh, he, he really, again, used that shot fake and, and good body control to, to, to let the defender go by him. And, and good play by Kanapke not drawing that next foul. John Elmore has really come to life in this second half. And Sanford fouled under the basket. You're seeing the Rockets now trying to take advantage of the, the lack of presence of, of Marshall's bigger. This time Sanford doesn't really have to worry about the shot blocker coming to get him. You know, he sees the help from, from George coming, but again, that doesn't bother him, not like the, the big shot blocker, because he's on the, on the bench with four fouls. Three fouls on Darius George now. The Rockets in the double bonus the rest of the way. I wouldn't be surprised if you don't see Marshall coming back in. And Tony just got teed up. I believe he did, yeah. I'm not sure if it was for, for words or I don't think he's that far out of the coach's box, but I think he he uh, he probably let his uh, emotions go. He's right on the line of the coach's box, I believe. Um, and he hasn't moved back from when the whistle blew, so that that's not the call. I think it was it was more his displeasure with, with the call. You know, right on <laughs> the edge of the coach's box. When Sanford hits the first technical free throw. Galen Sanford, one of the all-time top high school scorers in the history of Evansville, Indiana. Has started every game in his Toledo career. Started at the two as a freshman. Started every game at the point last year. This year, more of a combo guard. He can run the show when he has to. He can also leave that to Marion Jackson. Elmore trying to do a little too much. Kanapke with the block. Elmore trailing to play. It's five on four. Kanapke throws it down. Reward the big guy. Phenomenal defensive play. Great body control. He runs the floor. You got to get him the basketball. And boy, Big Luke finished strong. Elmore bumped. He'll shoot two. I think they got Fletcher with the body on the drive. And uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how Toledo goes now with, with Fletcher drawing his fourth foul. Almost saw that coming. I was almost uh, ready to call that foul when Elmore had the ball at the top of the key. And then I was expecting him to keep Pinneville on the bench till after the under eight timeout. Uh, but it looks like they're going to bring him back in. And uh, they've been a different team since he went out of the game with four fouls. Well, I mean, Pinneville is back in. So is Jared West. And interesting for Toledo that it's Dwayne Rose who checks in. So impressive in that five-minute stint earlier in this half. 
Delmore misses the second free throw. Pennebaugh will have to be careful with four fouls. by Jared West. Well, they're they're, they've had him matched up most of the second half when he's been in the game on Navigato, who's more of a perimeter player, maybe off the dribble a little bit, but more perimeter oriented. Um, so he's not banging in the post with Kanapke um, and, and an effort to try to keep him on the floor. Sanford travel. The 11th Toledo turnover. Maybe three travels here in the second half. That one uh, was at least a, it was an aggressive travel if it was a travel. Elmore pushed it to the corner. West catch and shoot. And that's what they talk about Jared West's ability to be a standing shooter. He got to a spot and they found him uh, not real, not real preferable enough of shooting off the curls and stuff. But boy, he got it to a spot and they found him. West won the Bill Evans Award last year. West Virginia Sports Writers Association Player of the Year. Off of Marshall and Shukov. Eighth on the shot clock. After the media timeout. Marshall has put Ideen Penabon back on the floor with four. Well, and again, I think his presence has also caused some disruption to Toledo's offense when he's in the game. Um, just because of his ability to block those shots. Is Dwayne Rose right by Penava. Except with Rose. Rose does not seem scared of him whatsoever. So would have been a big basket for the Rockets. Put them up nine. Kanapke batted that away. Zomor tried to hand it to Penava. Burks short on the floater. Nice block out by Navigato that time. He really kept them off the glass and able Toledo to limit him one shot. Toledo, of course, had one of the best rebounders in the country last year, and Steve Taylor Jr. Dr. Walchick said in the offseason he thought they would rebound much better as a team this year. That's off the shin of Kanapke. Because last year, a lot of times, guys would stand around and expect Steve Taylor to rebound everything. Yeah. Tough catch for Kanapke there. Uh, Jackson had it kind of slapped away from him. He tried to flip it over to Kanapke, but that's a, that's a long reach for the big guy to go down to his knees to get that pass. And I tell that story about Steve Taylor Jr. as Penava lets it fly from the outside. Because Nate Navigato has seven rebounds tonight, something we didn't see from him at all as a freshman or a sophomore. Well, but you also recognize that when you got a guy like Steve Taylor, rebounds that maybe Navigato could have gotten, Taylor also probably took some away from him as much as he took him away from the offensive players. Rose had it poked away. Here comes Jared West. Rose fouled Elmore, who was tripped up. Rose may be trying to do a little too much last time up the floor, and that gets Justin Roberts into the game. Good minutes from Rose thus far. You know, um, yeah, maybe a couple freshman decisions there those last couple possessions that coach didn't necessarily care for, but uh, um, again, I thought... Uh, uh, he gave, he's given good minutes so far this tonight. Elmore got the members bounce. Some ways I feel like we're at a fundraiser for in a free throw competition to raise money <laughs> for a charity here tonight. Marshall has attempted 20 free throws. Toledo 26. That's all. So that's 46 <laughs> in total. Sanford sees an opening and attacks. Surprisingly, Penova wasn't stuck in the lane there playing that one-man zone, and, and Sanford took advantage of it. All the defenders left the ball. You never leave the dribbler. And Burks has the answer at the other end. Uh, just as easy as Sanford got to it, Burks turned the corner and got there as well. Burks now with 10 points, though it's taken him 11 shots to get there. West with a steal and a layup. How many strips at half court? And Marshall's done a good job defending on the point guards at the point. Um, they've created several turnovers with their pressure on, on our dribblers up top. West with his second steal of the game. Navigato over Penava. He just hasn't quite found the range tonight. 
Aiden Delgado held to just six points. Missed all six threes he has attempted. Penava, a late whistle. I don't know if they got Kanapke or Jackson. Marion Jackson. Wow. Really? Not foul related, but I love the way John Elmore switched hands to deliver that pass. Most definitely. As we, get, as we raise another couple of dollars for the charity jar here. <laughs> Penova at the line. More so, I'm more so impressed with Elmore's ability handling the basketball and dishing Absolutely. Than, than I have been with his, his, his scoring. I mean, he's he's climbed up there to about, you know, quietly gotten, I think he's pushing, what, 19 points? Yeah. Um, which speaks volumes for itself when it's been a kind of, like you say, it's a quiet 19. Um, but uh, I, I do like the way he, he, he finds the open teammates, uh, and he, he does it so Delicately, I guess, in the way he feeds the ball. Marshall have ripped off six straight points in the last 50 seconds. Fletcher almost had it taken away by Elmore. Kanapke set a screen for Fletcher, who's back out there with four fouls. Fletcher off balance, shot and he banked it in. Wow. And could have been called for the, the, they could have gotten him to the free throw line on that one as well. Fletcher with 29. And another late whistle. The third on Luke Kanapke. Toledo's offense the last couple possessions has gotten kind of stagnant. Starting to stand around a little bit much. Um, look for them to start coming back and, and hopefully get that ball and themselves moving a little bit more and, and getting Marshall's defense moving to create some little spots to get open. Boy, Elmore has struggled from uh, literally the charity line. Six of 13 from the line tonight for an 86% free throw shooter. You know, we hear some of the high school teams that come into Savage Arena. This venue hosts plenty of state tournament games. Remark on the shooting background. They have a hard time with it. I wonder if it's that. That's what Elmore is dealing with as Sanford lays it in off the cut. Scoreless at halftime, Jalen Sanford. He now has 10. Burks off balance. There's nothing Sanford wrong with that shooting down. background. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Navigato <laughs> thought about the three, didn't take it. Sanford tries a deeper one and hits. Well, Sanford stepped into that when he had enough room. Navigato finds him at Sanford's trail. And that time, Sanford's momentum's taking him to the basket with the shot and much better shot. Elmore denied by Navigato. It's called Yannon off glass. And then Tony. Calls timeout right away. Goliana now with five. 4 11 left in this one. Toledo in Oakland and Texas Southern. Two more home games after this. Rockets will host Wright State next Saturday. Jackson State on the 20th. Toledo with 14 turnovers to Marshall's nine. Marshall done a nice job of converting off of those. 15 points as a result of those giveaways. And several of them have been up top, which have really led to good fast break opportunities for Marshall. Shot clock down to five. Sanford has to create something. Penova stripped it from him. 29 seconds deep into the shot clock. C.J. Burks had it taken away by Fletcher. He traveled. He was calling he was time calling. out. Ah, that's an awful call. Oh, my, my, my. What Fletcher saying to the bench and anyone else that will listen. He was clearly calling timeout. Yeah, he looks like he's got, he's got, he's, he's, he's set. He's got, he's got his, he's got himself landed. He's making the, the call and necessarily he's not, it wasn't like he was falling out of bounds when it took place. He had, he had basically made a jump. Nadine Penova has been out there for a while with four fouls for E.H. on Golianen and Burks. John Elmore has looked really good in the second half. Maybe got away with a travel there. Burks diving after it. And 
And it is a tie-up. Navagato forcing the jump ball, and it's rocket basketball on the arrow. If Burks, Burks had been trying to call timeout across the lane, he probably would have been called for the travel. Oh. Sorry. Mm-mm-mm. It's the Christmas season. I got to be that. <laughs> In a giving mood, are you tonight? <laughs> yeah, giving something. <laughs> Marshall pressuring full court. The Toledo team that, generally speaking, deals with that ball pressure very well. well you've, got, you've got your guards with Sanford and Jackson. Navigato handles it well, and, and Fletcher has the ability to, to bring it up at any time. Three minutes to play. Foul on Burke says he got tied up with Fletcher. Four on C.J. Burks. Again, a little body contact, not a great deal. Um, Salido will certainly take it, putting Fletcher at the free throw line. And John Fletcher now with an even 30. Tremendous night for a guy only shooting 68% from the line, 15 of 16. As Jackson reached in on Elmore. Todd Kowalczyk's teams always spend so much time in practice just shooting free throws. Not every coach does that. Shooting free throws and shooting situational free throws after, you know, after some conditioning moments where, you know, anybody can walk out to start practice when you're fresh and you just stretch and come and shoot free throws. It's another to shoot after running some drills and doing some things and and uh, that adds, that's more of a game type situation for the, for the players. Todd Kowalczyk's team is routinely among the best free throw shooting teams in the MAC. John Elmore only made one. Well, Toledo's got to expect them to really come after him with some traps and really be aggressive. They're going to, have to be strong with the basketball. As, as, we've, uh, as we've seen their ability to, to strip the, the Toledo players several times. John Elmore, 8 of 16 from the foul line. Kanapke out to set a screen. Five to shoot for Sanford. Kanapke rolling to the basket. Too strong. Pulled down by Elmore. Marshall trailing by seven. Penova drives on Kanapke, initiated contact, got it to go, and one more coming at the line. Four on Luke Kanapke. The whistle came from the bump and not from the attempt to block the shot. Penova had it rattle home. Idine Penova, 22 points. Into that full court pressure again. Look for Toledo to use a timeout here. Run the clock down. Timeout called as Burks came over to trap him along the sideline. Elmore with 21. Toledo led by Treshawn Fletcher, a career high, 31 points. See what Todd Kowalczyk drew up in the timeout. It looked like they wanted to try to get the ball to Fletcher on the block. Sanford, high arcing shot on the baseline and air ball. The shot clock reset when it shouldn't have. Well, credit Pinova with that. He switched over and really contested Sanford. Um, Jalen didn't have m much to do with it, but he tried to arc it up over, and um, that's just uh, it's good presence by their shot blocker there. Officials reviewing, I assume, to make sure the timing is right. Game clock to one minute, well, 147 goes up on the game clock. If you're Marion Jackson, expect the ball to come to Elmore and really sit down and get ready to play defense. Try to push him a little bit, and, and they've already switched over and had Fletcher on the. Elmore went right at Fletcher, got it to go. Two-point game, 87-85. Fletcher didn't want to commit the foul. Would have been his fifth. This time he calls timeout along that baseline. 
and is given the timeout. They've not yet played an extra session game this year, by the way. And they're going to put the ball in the hands of their freshman, Marion Jackson, run in the point, get the ball, get them into their offense. Jalen Sanford with all 13 of his points coming in the second half. 10 to shoot. Panepke out to set a screen. Sanford around Peneva. Too far underneath to score, and Peneva pulls it down. They can tie it with a two or take the lead with a three. Peneva goes right at Kanapke, tied at 87. Peneva has a, just has a good ability to handle the basketball. He's made several of those plays. Full timeout taken by Todd Kowalczyk. Uh, they've switched off twice now. Uh, the Rockets have tried as the shot clock's going down, having the ball in Sanford's hands and Jalen trying to create. Pinnacle's been able to switch off and defend him, move his feet well enough by Jalen beat him that time, but Pinnacle enough where he was able to distract and cause enough of a disruption to Jalen where he wasn't able to finish that, that drive. So Pinnacle's played a well of a game on both ends of the floor. 24 points, seven rebounds for the junior from Bosnia. Right. If you're Todd Kowalczyk, what's the message in this timeout? Well, again, I think you're going to look to see them attack a little bit sooner in the shot clock, um, you know, as opposed to trying to force it, at, you know, with three or four seconds to go. Um, Fletcher, curiously, has not touched the ball in the last couple of possessions. Um, you know, he's, he's kind of in stretches tonight, carried the Rockets, so they've had some, some good production out of several other players. Um, but Fletcher's kind of been the guy. Um, you know, look to try to get it in his hands and get back to more movement offensively. You know, again, you know, when it's a two-man game, oftentimes you're seeing, you know, these last few possessions, the other three guys standing around and, and uh, look for them to get something earlier in the offense. Stolen away by Burks. He'll throw it down and Marshall leads. Toledo with no timeouts. Jalen Sanford driving. Rejected by Penava. Well, the Rockets are going to have to foul now that uh, the shot clock and game clock are about in sync. John Elmore is the guy that you foul in this situation. With 24.3 left, such a good foul shooter. He has really struggled tonight. Eight of 16 from the line. Burks read the pass perfectly, and Marshall has the lead. Burks cuts the passing lanes, aggressive to the ball, and once he gets it, he, he pushes and gets it right to the rim and finishes with the dunk. So. Elmore hits the first. And Toledo conjure up in the final seconds of four point game, a timeout, Marshall. Well, Toledo's going to have to push hard again. With, we can't make it that way the last 24 seconds, so but the Rockets have to score quickly under control and out of this possession. So, Marshall on a 12 0 run. Fletcher in a hurry, one end to the other, another block by Penova. Ahead of the pack, Johnny Colianen. That may do it. Now you have to have a three. Navagato missed it. And that's it. A huge comeback win for Marshall. They score the game's final 14 points.